Every time I take a bite of a York peppermint patty, I get the cool sensation of being accidentally locked up in the Hazel Alice warehouse overnight. There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there. For the fond recollections that lie there. In that old seeing some nice things that I'm going, going to show you, but things I'm just not going to purchase because price points seem to be a little high today. I don't know. I think somebody's having a party back in that pricing room. Because they've gone, seems as though they've gone up. So here's a depression glass bowl. Uh, it's priced at $8 and it is also chipped right there. There's a chip right there. Not a lot of room left in it at $8. Okay, so I'm going to say no to that. This is very pretty up here. Uh, this is, I think, $12? $12? 13 And I haven't looked at it for chips or cracks, but I really don't want to spend $13 on it. Wouldn't be bad if you're just going to keep it for yourself. And it does have a sticker on it. I'll let you see that. Okay. So, I'm not going to buy that. Okay, why am I breaking in? Because I am certain that I'm going to get a lot of discussion about that Anna Huta uh, cut to clear lidded candy dish thing that I didn't buy. Now I have to admit, I've never heard of that company before. And I had a feeling it was a contemporary piece based on, excuse me, based on the sticker and just it looked new. I also assumed it was a German company because of the umlaut over uh, the last name H-U-T-T-E, which I'm going to assume is pronounced Hutte. Let's all practice our umlauts together, shall we? You know, I was told the best way to pronounce the umlaut is trying to say the vowel E and the vowel O at the same time. Practice it with me. Uh, see, you're all doing it in your living rooms, aren't you, right now? You're, everybody just went, uh. Okay, let's go look at this Anahuta thing. Move me over there. Aha! I went to eBay, and I scrolled. I looked for this in red, and there's 14 pieces of it that sold in the last uh, 90 days. And I rank them from highest price to, where am I? I rank them from the highest price to the lowest. Lowest. So we can see $44. They took less than that for that vase. Six wine stems for $50. Now we're getting down to $20 or less. A couple of baskets, several baskets. A vase for $13. Baskets for $10, $5, $6. There's a bell and that uh, I don't know much about that okay and then there's some other Pete now we're getting out of it so that's all that sold in that particular line of uh, German made crystal we don't see the piece that I saw in the store uh, today but based upon the but the piece in the store was $13 and so based upon those prices um, I would have been stuck with a very nice piece of glass. And it's a beautiful piece of glass, crystal, wonderful for a collector because you're gonna you would be getting at a getting at a good you'd be getting it at a good price, but now you know why I didn't buy it to resell it. Okay. Go back to practicing practicing your umlauts and I'll go back to shopping. There's more of our uh, Georges Briard forbidden fruit. I haven't seen as much lately. Oh, I love that. 
I like the shape. Three dollars? Candle wick is such an easy pattern to spy. This looks like it might match that uh, candy dish we saw up top. See, that's 13. Hmm. But no. This is made by uh, Duncan and Miller. That's called Teardrop, is the pattern on that. That's a very common divided dish that I see quite often, and it's worth about $3. And I'm fairly certain this is also Duncan and Miller. They have a uh, very particular style. That is a big chip. That is a big chip right there. Can you see that? What is this thing? It's like some kind of pipe. Five dollars for that little gravy boat. Nope. We're gonna sail away from that gravy boat. Well, these two haven't gotten their divorce yet, which is a shame. They should have never gotten married in the first place. I did spy this piece of pretty pressed glass down here that's also decorated, gilded. And this was here, oh, I don't know, several days ago, and I didn't purchase it. It's pretty. Um, I don't know, I'm just sort of, it's five dollars. And I should be over the top about this, but there's just, I don't know, I just, for some reason I'm not feeling it. It's dirty on the inside, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that out. Uh, I probably can, but I don't know, sometimes things just call your name and sometimes they don't. I always answer when my mother calls my name, or when my father called my name, but I'm not going to answer to that, because that's not really calling my name. I know some of you are saying, but it's calling my name! And this has a big hunk right out of the corner. Look at this. Look at this. Terrible, terrible. This is uh, made by Homer Laughlin, and uh, the pattern, or the blank rather, is called Nautilus. And uh, it's because of the shells, the Nautilus shells, which you can clearly see the two handles and on the lid. I like the black and orange uh, color decoration on this. And this is uh, from the 1940s. That little sugar bowl. I have a set of Nautilus at home that is uh, decorated in silver.
Very pretty. Want to see the price? Ten dollars. Stoneware. Someone has been organizing shelves here, as you can see. Aha, look down there. You know, you have to get down on your knees sometimes to see what's on the shelves. I would have missed that piece of Pyrex down there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy it. Because it looks like it's in uh, pretty bad condition and I have blown out all my Pyrex, as you know. I did that, oh what, a couple weeks ago. Got rid of a bunch of Pyrex, but let's look at it. Okay. Oh, the condition isn't bad. It's four dollars. It's it's probably looking more limey green to you than it is to me here in the store. Here in the store it's looking more on the avocado side. So we're gonna leave that for someone else to discover. Alright. Keep shopping. Let's see what is this. It is uh, Payton City. All right. I'm feeling like I want to get out of this aisle for a minute. Let's go see what's in the glass aisle. Ooh, what is this mess? Ooh, I don't want to touch it. All right, I will. I'm going in. Oh. Oh. I can hear Karen Carpenter Records playing right now. Oh, put this down, it's nasty. Ooh! Okay, I need to hand sanitize. I'm sorry. Am I hiding, not hiding the fact that I am not a fan of the 1970s? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I thought I was going to get a lot of heat from the shabby chic crowd a couple videos ago when I said, please stop chalk painting old furniture. Well, hey, I feel very bold this morning because I got a lot of support. <laughs> so right next to my thrift store, which is behind me, I'm in the parking lot, so don't get upset that I'm driving and holding my, web, my cell phone in one hand. Everybody who wants to chalk paint and shabby chic, that's where you get your next project. Can you read that? Let me zoom in. Ready to finish furniture. Real wood. Please leave the antiques alone. Thank you. Here's a little something that's unusual and I hadn't seen before. I thought I'd show you. Um, anytime I see divided plates, I always think of earlier times. And uh, indeed, this one is an old plate. It's uh, transferware. It just says Germany on the back. Castle. Some uh, numbers and a, a hallmark stamped in there. $1.99. I'm not going to purchase it, but I thought I'd show it to you. That's a handsome plate. But uh, I know nothing about that particular uh, make or model, so to speak. Okay, I am so glad I found this today because a year ago, probably over a year, I did a video and I had just the top of this tree and I kept saying, I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is and everybody, and I mean everybody, was telling me, oh, it's a light up Christmas tree, you plug it in and it has a light under it and little bulbs. Well, I knew that's not what it was, and I, I kept telling everybody, no, it's too small. There's no way that you could put a light underneath it. And people were just like not wanting to hear that. So 
I did some research and I did actually find out later, because I found one at a flea market, I found out what it was. But I didn't have any way to, to film at the flea market, but I do now. So I want to show you what this thing is. Th these are ashtrays on the bottom and this is a cigarette lighter. Now what you cannot see is underneath there, you see the hole? The cigarette lighter is missing on this one too. But that's the spot where the cigarette lighter would go. And then it would rest on this base and then the other three are little ashtrays. <laughs> Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death, tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate. You hate to make him wait. You've got to have another cigarette. And this obviously was a homemade piece, um, and uh, it's funny, the piece, I, the one I had was missing its uh, lighter as well, uh, and but it was only the top. So I just want to show you, Mystery Solved, that's what it is. It's not a light-up Christmas tree, it is, believe it or not, a cigarette lighter with ashtrays. Yay! Now I'm putting this thing back because I don't want it. <laughs> 